Okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we want to make sure that Bruno does not go inside with the camera operating. <laughs> so, Rick, get back out here. Uh, <laughs> this one was in pretty good shape. This is actually one of the ones that was worked on by one of our members here. Okay. So, FX, right? Yeah, this one, um, pretty good shape. There's no way to physically take away the counterbalance because it's had rework done to it. It's welded all the way around. I checked everything. There's no way that's coming apart. It's one basic solid slab. Yeah. Um, we even, even though that this stair had rivets in it and it was still looked fairly good, we swapped them all out. Every stair thread, every stair thread all the way up. Took out all the rivets, yeah. all the way, both sets of stairs. Uh, it's been fully tested, load tested, fireman's ladder tested. But these rivets are still here though. You haven't taken these out, which is still in. Those stairs are welded oh, on the bottom. Are, yeah, those are just the uh, ones going to that support. Because camera. of the you ladder. Put, yeah, you put a beam, you put a beam. Yeah, yeah, on the top and on the bottom and up. Because when the ladder closes, someone had ground all the all the yeah, rivets it down. Shearing problem. Yeah, it was shearing them off. So I wasn't going to do the same thing again. Yeah. So I welded them. Yeah. And then uh, all the connections of the railings to the fireman's ladder and from the ladders down and then the tube sections I had to rebuild a bunch of the handrail because uh, where they're uh, bolted to the to the ladders, those are like where that bolt I showed you that stretched. See that top one, the tube coming down, the two bolts coming through? Yeah. That's how a lot of these are done. And those yeah. bolts inside there will just wick away until there's nothing. And then yeah, you go yeah. That's on the inside, yeah. 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 That's, a, that's a hidden 10% or some weird little things yeah. that happen, otherwise 90%. But guys, I want you guys to treat and, this as a standard <laughs> inspection and just look up. Any evidence of maintenance? Yep. Uh, somebody mentioned the chain. What do you want to say about the chain that they weren't aware of <laughs> that the fire escape has to be balanced. Your chain or the no, no, that was on there. The chain right. was already on there. No, there's two chains here, that's okay. The new, one. the new one was on there too. It shouldn't have been. Yeah, there were No, it doesn't ones. matter. Right. Again, it, it shouldn't have been just because it's not part of the original design. The old one is part of the original design. That's just the check chain for the thing, so it doesn't over swing. Yeah. The other that's one's part of the check for. chain. The other yeah. one is the check chain. Yeah. My question is, is this thing balanced? Does it drop two to three feet per second or does it come up by itself? It's not that version. Uh, Portland, yeah. the, the Oregon version is basically, it, it neutralizes in the up position. It does not have an automatic drop. You actually have to step on it to start it down. Okay. And that's that's standard for Oregon. Right, uh, more and than so not. it's so called the self-actuating ones. And yeah. the problem with the self-actuating well, ones that you have to worry about is they have to step on the first and then it drops two to three feet per second, hits the ground and stays down. Do you know whether or not, if you if we brought this down ourselves now, no, it'll it will stay up myself. Okay, so it needs to be rebalanced. The way to do that very quickly, again, it's a new thing that everybody's learning. You put a weight underneath the, fr the front tread, a big chunk of steel, and they should start dropping. You might need 20 pounds on the nose. Yeah. Or in the channels, we usually put chunks of steel in the channel on both sides, and that's all the weight it needs. A release arm would be right here, coming straight down with a, I use 7 8 round rod, coming down, and then it L's right on top of here, and then up there, it just basically blocks your path. Through a tube, so it's a simple release mechanism, and then when you release it up there, this thing goes up, goes down by itself. With 20 pounds, 25 pounds on the nose, she will drop all the way by herself. Okay, so on the design for that release, uh, is, as you're exiting, you're about to step down those stairs and you're going to push it away? You have away. to push it. It's single action requiring no special knowledge. There's a barrier. I'm running like a crazy man. Like, get this thing out of here. Not knowing that that and push away, it's a block. It push it, your body's gonna yeah, your run. body's going to run into it. You're like, oh, what the hell is this? And you'll you, get rid of it. Yeah, you go like, you hey, you know, you get rid of it like that. It's called single action requiring no special knowledge. Yeah, the, 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 the video footage that you showed earlier with some of those, it was very difficult to tell what he was doing. Because we weren't able to see the top and bottom at the same time. Right. So that explanation. And, and right now, if you go over there and you jump on top, that I can pull this down. So I can actually break into this building right now. So as soon as I put that release mechanism, I can't break into this building anymore. It can only be actuated. Now sometimes you're putting a buddy over no, no, here. Wait a minute, you're saying it can't be broke into you now. That's a false thing. Yeah, that's true. I well, can grab up and pull myself up the thing you climb up. Yeah, but it doesn't usually, matter what. Usually, yeah, just by putting a release lever in a drop and charging more money is not going to eliminate the need of that. No, 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 but it, it deters them. Just, you know, all the deterrence, people don't break I into the things that are going to work. But a lot of times the guy will stand on somebody's shoulder over here and go up there and activate the release and move it. But up, up at the release, you put a chain over it, a loop chain over it so that you can't activate. And, and as soon as you push it, the loop chain and the thing just does this. 
and the loop chain stops anybody from, but usually when this is 12 to 14 feet off the ground, you don't have any issues where people can manipulate it from down here. And usually when the cantilever is up against it, there's always this pressure of it trying to drop already, because when you're done, this thing weighs about 25 pounds on the nose. It is at that time that you're always gonna see the chain with a little, a little play in it. Because this chain and that spring is nothing more that when you throw it back up, it's a two-man operation, the lock is maybe up. One man down, one man up there, when you throw the cantilever up from the, there, you throw it up, the guy just blocks it. Sometimes when he throws it up too fast beyond, that's when you get that, that spring. It's like, ding, uh, but then when you got the release arm, it locks, it, it hits your release arm. It's one of the, it's everywhere in the United States. But you, I very rarely see a release arm over here. Oh, where you go? No, actually, let's, let's just do one last piece. Any square head bolts that you still see here, that you want to deal with, that you want to say, hey, did they load test it to eliminate that? He says they load test it, so the fact that they load test it, the squares can stay or they have to go? Stay. They stay. Because that's how you eliminate a, a square head. You either load test it or you reinforce it in lieu of a load test. How about connections into the wall? Do we need to deal with connections into the wall here or did the load test cover that? Load test covered. You're done. The only thing the engineers have to be careful of is prior to a load test, which is part of the load test procedure, they do have to do some investigative work to verify that there's no rot inside prior to a load test. Because I'll tell you, these 50 to 75 year old buildings had had the parapet walls with some issue. Guess where the water went in? Came down between the veneer and it rotted these things. And because there's that little three quarter gap between the two, it never blew off the rust out to give you a visual. It kept falling down the building, and that's why it looked great, but it's rotted on the inside, and we have nothing but photographs of rotted steel in the building that if you load test it, it could be a problem. I Any questions? To, I had to, this one actually was required to, uh, I had to do both levels concurrently, almost 8,000 pounds on there. So think about that, guys. <laughs> 8,000 pounds. You have to get 8,000 pounds of weight down here. Where do you get 8,000 pounds? 8,000 pounds of what? Sand, water. Each gallon weighs how much? Eight, seven point third. something eight or eight gallons? Eight, eight, eight and a third. So you need 1,000 gallons of water down here attached to some sort of mechanism if you're going to be doing the cable tech. And then you need the cable to, to, aid to be able to handle 8,000 pounds. Oh, have you know how crazy load testing is? And every fire escape is a different variation. I can get to this one. Put me on the back on a rooftop. How do you load ten? How do you load eight thousand pounds on a roof that is a shed roof that overhanging some fire escape? I mean, some. So verification and reinforcement is a lot of times faster, cheaper than load testing because of all the weight you got to carry around. So you do the testing. Okay. Any questions on this one? Yeah, let's go ahead and back this way and we'll head back down over that way.